Welcome to the Deep Dive, where we get straight to the heart of tech topics. Today, we're tackling something that, well, trips up a lot of folks in the home lab world. It's this question. Can you really get high-performance computing, like gaming or heavy transcoding, in a virtualized setup with just one GPU? For a long time, that seemed almost like a riddle, you know? Conventional wisdom was pretty clear. You needed multiple graphics cards. But uh, our sources today, mostly real-world experiences, tips from forums, people actually doing the stuff, they paint a different picture, and the platform at the center of it all, it's Proxmox. That powerhouse open-source virtualization tool so many of you are using. So our mission is basically to unlock these latest GPU pass-through secrets, as the community calls them, specifically for achieving success with a single GPU setup. Because honestly, there's a real thrill when you get GPU pass-through working, giving a VM or maybe an LXC container direct hardware access, bypassing the host. It's a game changer for the heavy stuff, gaming, video editing, AI. Well, absolutely. It's often called the holy grail for virtualization. And well, for good reason. When you hand over that GPU directly, the VM or container gets basically full control. You're looking at near native performance. Think about it running a proper Windows gaming setup, but inside a VM. That's the kind of thing pass through enables. Or, you know, for media servers like Plex or maybe Image for photos, it means hardware transcoding. Super smooth streaming, even with lots of users. And yeah, for AI workloads, TensorFlow, and the like, direct GPU access is pretty much essential to avoid huge bottlenecks. The big hurdle, or perceived hurdle anyway, has always been systems with only one GPU. Doesn't matter if it's integrated graphics on your CPU or just one dedicated card. People worry, understandably, about losing console access on the host. You know, making their Proxmox box unmanageable. Or just breaking things. But what's really interesting is how users themselves have figured out ways around this. It's surprisingly achievable now. Okay, so the community basically cracked it. Is that what we're saying? Can you actually pass through your only GPU? And looking through these discussions, the answer seems to be yes. A pretty strong yes, actually. The consensus is clear. It's absolutely doable. But, and this is a big but, you really need to plan it out. It's definitely not just flipping a switch. You've got to be methodical. Exactly. And the core reason it works, Proxmox itself doesn't need a GPU to run. It's fundamentally designed to operate headless. No local graphical console required. Management happens through the web interface, or maybe SSH, right? So when you give that single GPU away to a VM, Proxmox just keeps running in the background. You access it over the network. That headless capability is key. That makes sense. It's built for remote management anyway. And we see people confirming this works. Like, one user just flat out said, I passed through my only iGPU to a VM, no issues. Simple as that. So it works for integrated graphics too, not just those big discrete cards. As long as Proxmox is set up to run without needing that local display, but like you said, not plug and play. There are specific steps, specific tweaks needed. So what are those steps? How do they figure this out? All right, let's break down the practical steps, the sort of secrets people discovered. First up, and this is foundational, enable headless operation. Since the GPU is going to the VM, your Proxmox host won't have anything plugged into its video port, essentially. But, like we just said, that's okay. The web UI, SSH, they keep working fine over the network. Yeah, that user quote really nails it. Proxmox will just be running headless. The normal web interface for management and SSH will work as usual. Crystal clear. But, okay, thinking about potential problems, relying purely on the network makes me a little nervous. What if something hiccups with the network config? Ah, you've hit on a major pain point people discovered. There's a potential pitfall there. Listen to this warning from one user. It works fine until one day you add an NVMe drive and it causes your network interface name to shift. Then you have no network and no console. Nightmare scenario. So, yeah, you absolutely need to double check your network settings. Make them stable. Maybe use persistent names if you can. You don't want that network lifeline cut. Okay, step two. Blacklist the GPU drivers on the Proxmox host. The idea here is simple. You need to stop Proxmox itself from trying to use the GPU. You want it completely free for the VM to grab. So for NVIDIA cards, you typically blacklist the NVIDIA driver or maybe the open source Nouveau driver. If you have an Intel iGPU, you're looking at i9-15. For AMD, it's usually AMD G2. Basically, tell the host OS, hands off this device. Blacklisting. Okay, so the host just ignores the card completely then. What happens on the host machine itself? Does the screen just go blank permanently, even if the VM isn't running? Pretty much, yeah. Once blacklisted, the host has no driver to output video from that card. One person shared exactly that blacklisting the NVIDIA drivers caused my entire system to not have a display out, even when the VM wasn't up. It can be a bit unnerving the first time, the workaround. People suggest setting up a serial console connection if your hardware supports it, or using the virtual BIOS features in Proxmox, like another user found. 
I pass through the iGPU and can use the virtual machine provided serial BIOS for interaction with the real console of the host. Clever little hacks to keep some control. All right, so the host isn't using the GPU. Step three is configuring the actual pass through. This means enabling IOMU, that's the Input Output Memory Management Unit. You gotta turn that on in your computer's BIOS or UEFI first, critical step. Then you also need to enable it in Proxmox's configuration, usually by editing the GRB bootloader settings. IOMMU is what lets the hardware be directly assigned by passing the host's regular memory management. It's crucial for performance. After that, you go into the VM settings in Proxmox and explicitly add the GPU hardware to it. And this is where the magic happens, right? Where the VM gets the power. We saw users having success here, like someone running image for photo management inside an Ubuntu VM using the pass-through GPU. They just said, works great, shows it's not just for Windows gaming. Exactly. Very versatile. Yeah. But, and this is important, you must check your hardware supports IOMU properly. Motherboard, CPU, they both need to be compatible. Yeah. If not, this whole process is a non-starter. Now, beyond just making it work, there's a really key insight from the community about how to use the GPU best. Specifically, the difference between using it with a full virtual machine, VM, versus a lightweight container, LXC. This is crucial. When you pass the GPU to a VM, that VM gets exclusive access, full stop, it's like one user put it. If you pass a device to a VM, it is no longer available to the host, and so also unavailable to any LXEs. Mm. So VMs are great when one thing needs all that power, like your dedicated Windows gaming machine. LXEs, though, they're different. They can actually share the GPU. The host can still use it, and multiple LXEs can use it all at the same time. Okay, that's really interesting. Sharing the GPU, that opens up a lot of possibilities, doesn't it? I saw someone mentioning... Multiple LXCs can even use the single GPU for stuff like transcoding at the same time. Mm -hmm. Wow. So for things like Plex or Image or anything doing transcoding where maybe multiple users are hitting it, LXCs sound like the way to go. Much more efficient use of the hardware, maybe. Precisely. If you need GPU acceleration for several services concurrently, but none need 100% of the GPU all the time, LXCs are often a much better fit. Yeah. Less overhead than multiple VMs, too. All right, this is super helpful, but are there even more like cutting edge things people are trying for those who want that extra edge? Oh yeah, the community is always pushing things. Yeah. There are a couple of advanced options bubbling up. One is SRIOV, which stands for Single Root IO Virtualization. This is popping up mainly with some newer Intel iGPUs, think 12th and 13th generation core processors. What SRIOV lets you do is essentially create virtual GPU functions from one physical GPU. You can then assign these virtual functions to different VMs. Whoa, virtual GPUs from one physical one. So yeah. Like partitioning it? What does that actually let you do? More VMs sharing the same card? Pretty much. It allows multiple VMs to get a slice of the GPU pie independently. We saw that amazing example. I did that with my Intel iGPU, and now it has seven virtual iGPUs and one for the host. Seven. Imagine running multiple lightweight VMs, each with some GPU acceleration. Huge potential. But big caveat here. It often needs special sometimes experimental drivers, like a DKMS driver, which can be a bit fiddly. Another option people mention is GVTG. Similar goal splitting in Intel iGPU's power. It can let you share between a VM and even LXCs simultaneously, but the feedback on GVTG is often that it's, well, tedious is the word used, harder to set up apparently. And again, like SREOV, these aren't universally available. Hardware support is very specific. You have to check compatibility first. So while all this is exciting, we need to keep a level head about the risks versus the rewards. The biggest risk, we keep coming back to it, is losing that local console access. You become totally dependent on the network for managing Proxmox, and that user's nightmare scenario adding hardware, network interface names changing, suddenly no network and no console access, that's the real danger. Yeah, that's the scenario that keeps home labbers up at night. Okay, if that happens, if you're locked out, panic aside, what's the first move, and how do you prevent it? First move, check physical connections, reboot routers, the usual network troubleshooting. Maybe try connecting directly if possible. Prevention is better though. If your hardware has it, setting up IPMI is fantastic. It's a separate management interface on server boards, works even if the main OS is down, mm -hmm. or a simple serial console connection can be a lifesaver. It's low tech, but reliable. Having that backup access plan is just smart. Okay, plan for the worst, hope for the best, makes sense. But let's talk about the best. The rewards sound pretty sweet. People are running full Windows gaming VMs smoothly. Someone mentioned running Blue Iris, a surveillance system, handling 14 cameras, all off that one pass-through GPU. That's impressive. It really is. And for the media server crowd, sharing an iGPU across multiple LXCs for transcoding, that's huge. It lets you build a really capable, efficient media hub on relatively modest hardware. 
Yeah, hearing someone just say, I use it to pass through my GPU to a Windows VM to game on it. That's the goal for many, isn't it? It really is about that thrill, like we said at the start, turning your existing box into something much more powerful through virtualization. That's the core reward. And the community keeps pushing forward. What's next? Well, things like Intel adding SRIOV to newer iGPUs suggest this kind of GPU sharing might become more mainstream, maybe easier down the line. But for now, these advanced features are still, you know, experimental specific hardware needed. Right. But the good news is even for older systems, the standard pass-through methods we talked about, blacklisting, IOMMU configuration, those still work great for lots of people. The key is really just staying informed, checking compatibility, and following those excellent guides you find in the Proxmox forums and community wikis. So if you're listening and thinking, okay, I want to try this, let's recap some quick tips for success. One, verify hardware support. Seriously, check your CPU, motherboard specs for IOMU first. If you want SRIOV or GVTG, double check that too. Two, test incrementally. Don't try everything at once. Get passed through working for one basic VM first. Then maybe try LXCs or more complex setups. Baby steps. Three, oh, this is vital. Document your setup. Remember that user who regretted not taking notes? Don't be that person. Write down the commands you run, the config files you edit. It'll save you hours later. Four, use community resources, Proxmox forums, wikis, Reddit threats. There are gold mines. Someone has probably hit your exact problem before. And five, plan for headless access. Make sure SSH and the web UI are working perfectly before you start messing with GPU drivers and pass through. Avoid locking yourself out. Absolutely. So wrapping up, single GPU pass through in Proxmox. It's definitely not just theory anymore. It's a real proven path. People are doing it successfully. By tapping into that collective knowledge, you really can unlock your GPU's potential for gaming, media, AI, whatever your project is. Yes, it takes careful steps, headless setup, blacklisting drivers, IOMMU configs, but as we've heard, the results, often totally worth it. And with those advanced options like SRIOV maybe becoming more common, who knows what we'll be doing in a couple of years. But for now, you have the tools and the knowledge shared by the community. Your single GPU, it might be ready for a whole new life powering your virtual creations. Go claim that potential. So the question to leave you with is, what kind of virtualization superpower will you unlock with just one GPU? Thanks for diving deep with us today.